open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Give glory to God, our light and our life. Come, O oh, come, let us worship. Come, O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout with joy to our saving rock. Come, enter in with our songs of praise. Come, enter in with thanksgiving. You are a great and a wondrous God, cupping in your hands all the depths of earth. You made the hills and the mountains high. You made the seas and the dry land. Come, O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout with joy to our saving rock. Come, enter in with our songs of praise. Come, enter in with thanksgiving. Come, let us worship and bowing low. Kneel before the one who has made us all. You are the God whom we call our own. We are the flock that you shepherd. Come, oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout a joy to our saving rock. Come, enter in with our songs of praise. Come enter in with thanksgiving. Here's an interesting question. Who is the most important person in the Old Testament? Besides the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ, or, or God himself, of course. And I, I suppose somebody could say Adam and Eve, because after all, without them there is no life. Moses looms large. I think a lot of people would say Moses. After all, the Old Testament was referred to as Moses and the prophets. Isaiah, for modern-day Jewish people, looms large as well. Such a fantastic prophet there. Uh, King David. King David. I, he is a huge political figure. He wrote so many of the Psalms. Uh, he is such a huge figure. He is the ancestor of Christ. You could say Elijah, the great prophet. But I think if you ask St. Paul, he would say Abraham. And I say that because he keeps bringing up Abraham. When St. Paul makes an argument, for instance, in Romans or Galatians, he says, here is the truth. This is what I'm teaching. And he makes a logical, usually, uh, argument for his truth. Like in Romans, he says, we're, we're all sinful, both Jew and Gentile. doesn't matter if you had the Hebrew Bible or not, you're all sinful. And, 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 and yet we, we are righteous not by law, we are righteous by faith. And he continues that argument throughout, throughout the first eight chapters, but in the middle of that argument, he stops and he says, and by the way, I'm not making this up. He does this in Galatians 2. By the way, I'm not making this up. This was true also in the history of Israel. And he provides an example, and it's Abraham. And I think that is why St. Paul, if you asked him who's the most important figure in the Old Testament, he would say Abraham and it comes to this verse in Genesis chapter 15. Abraham believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. That through faith, Abraham was righteous. And it had nothing to do with circumcision. That's what the problem in, the, in, in Galatia was. And St. Paul says that's not how you get into heaven by doing this. In fact, don't you understand about Abraham? That he was 
credited with righteousness before God had given the command of circumcision. It's not by any good works that we have done. It's not by keeping the Sabbath. It's not about anything else but Christ being righteous in our place. And this righteousness delivered through the Holy Spirit, his means of grace, through faith to us. And so Abraham was tested, wasn't he? He was tested most dramatically when he was to take his one and only beloved son Isaac up to Mount Moriah to sacrifice him. Abraham had not always believed God. He had come up with his own plan over and over again, including having an affair with the maidservant Hagar to bring about a son, a son that had never been given by God, even though God has promised him. Well, even when Isaac was born then, the God came through the promise. God then said, sacrifice this one and only beloved son of the promise. And now Abram, Abraham went. He went. But God did not want any more bloodshed. He had tested Abraham by pushing him to the extreme. He stopped the sacrifice. And by the way, that is a picture of what the father had to go through. Father Abraham would know, like no other person, what the Father in Heaven felt like on Good Friday because God the Father had a one and only Son who, by the way, carried willingly the wood to his own sacrifice. On the very same mountain, Isaac carried the wood willingly to his sacrifice. That never happened. But the sacrifice of the Son of God actually would happen. Merciful 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of faith of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Praise be to God, the Lord, blessed King. 